Okay, welcome once again to Byron's Veggie Cooking Show. It's been a few weeks and I'd like to thank um, all those of you who've sent encouragement and kind words and uh, been asking about when's the next episode, when's the next episode. Well, here it is. Um, today I'm doing a special one. It's uh, one of my specialties and it's a Thai style uh, satay veggies. Now, satay isn't necessarily a specifically a Thai dish. Um, you could say it's popular around Southeast Asia. Um, but what I'm doing today is the kind of um, satay veggie dish you would find in, in, a, in a Thai place in Australia. All right, so obviously the first step is to get my rice on. So I'm using um, Thai jasmine rice. This is just um, the one from, from Aldi. Thanks Aldi. I'm still waiting for my um, product placement check. Um, so I'm going to get this going on the rice cooker. And then once again, yeah, um, if you don't have a rice cooker, go and get one. You're doing it wrong. Now I've heard people say, um, oh, I can cook rice just as good. No, you can't. Get a rice cooker. Uh, so, um, so I'm going to put um, three cups of rice in, and with jasmine rice, three cups of rice requires four cups of water. So it's basically one and a third cups of water for every cup of rice. So there's three cups of rice. Now to that, I'm just going to add some salt. And if you cook um, rice without salt, it's hard to describe, but there's just something not right about it. Yeah, it doesn't taste great and the texture's a bit different too. So just add a bit of salt. Uh, and I'm also going to add a little bit of oil to it. Now someone asked me, why do you add um, oil to your rice? Um, I suppose the best, um, analogy I can think of is well, why do you butter bread? Yeah, it just, it just makes it better, it just, just does. You don't need much, just, just a dribble. Okay, now, so now I'm gonna add four cups of uh, water. Okay, so I'm gonna give that a little stir and then I'm just gonna leave it to cook with the lid on and I'm not gonna stir it again because I wanna get that nice um, glutinous, clumpy goodness that you get at the Thai shop. Okay, so the rice is on now. Now, cooking the rice is the, the most time-consuming part of this dish. So while that's on, I'm gonna start cutting up all my veggies. So I'll just uh, introduce you to what I've got. So I've got um, onion, uh, I've got some Asian greens, I've got some um, baby pak choy and some choy sun. Um, I've got some bean sprouts, some tofu. Um, with the tofu, I like the hard, the firm stuff, yeah. Um, and now at Thai places, they usually deep fry it. Um, I haven't got a deep fry, so I'm gonna show you how to get around that. Um, like I said, I like the hard stuff. I can't stand the soft tofu. That's a personal preference. But for, um, for what I'm cooking today, I think you really want the firm stuff anyway. Um, I'm gonna use crunchy peanut butter, garlic and ginger. I've got some curry powder here. Now this is a hot one I got from the Indian shop, but you can just use your regular, you know, Clive of India or whatever. Um, some coconut cream, some lemon juice, a bit of peanut oil, uh, capsicum, four eggs, um, a lovely cauliflower there, some broccoli, uh, some zucchini and carrot, half a dozen mushies, some palm sugar. Now, palm sugar goes in almost everything um, Thai. So if you're cooking Thai food and you haven't got um, palm sugar, it's probably not going to taste right. Um, and I've got a little bit of pumpkin. Did I mention pumpkin? Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to cut that up now. Now with this stuff, um, you don't need to cut it too finely. You know, reasonably rusty. Depending, you know, it's a taste thing, I suppose, more than anything. You know, some people like it chunky, but yeah, you know, you notice when you um, when you go to Thai restaurants, it's usually, you know, not cut up too small.
So I've cut up my um, onion reasonably coarse. Nice, um, cut it long ways, nice long strips, and I'm just breaking it up. And also, um, you'll notice, you know, when you go to your Thai restaurant, they don't overcook the onions. You know, a lot of places, a lot of styles of food, you, you'll fry your on onions until they're brown first and then add the other stuff. Whereas for this dish, I'm just gonna basically chuck all the veggies in pretty much at the same time. Now, I'm only gonna use half of this zucchini. So I got quite a lot of veggies there, so I may as well, um, you know, I don't want to make it too huge. Okay, so I've cut up all my ingredients now. Uh, the rice is still cooking. Um, so while we wait for that to cook, I'm going to prepare um, the tofu. And now, as I mentioned, normally in a Thai restaurant, that would be deep fried, right? But I don't have a deep fryer. I probably don't really need a deep fryer. Um, um, so what I do is I actually cook it in my sandwich press. Now, those of you that know me will be having a laugh now because my mates think I cook everything in the sandwich press, which I mean is partially true. But um, it works really good to get in it crispy on the outside and sort of chewy on the middle. You, you, get, you end up with a pretty similar um, texture to what you get from, from deep frying it. Um, and also I'm going to prepare the eggs. I'll get the tofu happening first. Okay, so I've cut the tofu into nice thick pieces. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grease up the old sandwich press. Like so. Use a piece of tofu to spread that grease around. Lovely. And then flip it and make sure you get oil on both sides. And repeat. So I get a piece of tofu in, flip it. Now with um, this sandwich press it's handy that I can set it to stay open. So um, on some sandwich presses, the ones that don't have the settings, you know, we can set it at different heights. Um, your tofu can come out a little bit flat, which is okay. Um, but yeah, this one's good because I can actually set it at a certain height and it won't squash my tofu too much. Okay, so I've got that going. Now that, that can take a little while and what you'll usually find uh, on the sandwich press, there's sort of hot spots, like there's some parts will be hotter than the other. So you leave it for say five minutes or more and then open it up and then you'll probably find that a few pieces are, are pretty much done and a few are still going. So take the ones that are done out and then move them around and you know what I mean. But you always want to pre-cook your tofu, right? If you just stick it straight in, it's just not the same. There's just something about it. You want that crispy outside goodness, yeah? I mean, even if you just fry it up in a pan, that's fine too. Okay, so what I'm doing here, I've got four eggs and I'm basically just gonna whisk them up. And I like to whisk it up with a little bit of soy just because it gives it an awesome, you know, salty soy kind of Asian, I suppose, flavor. It's not necessary and I, you know, I'm not saying that that's the way that it has to be done, but, you know, it seems to work pretty good. Just gonna add a little bit of soy. That'll do. Just 
that up like that and I'll, I'll fry that up separately in a minute. Okay, so um, the rice is nearly done. Uh, the tofu is coming along nicely. So I may as well fry up these eggs while I wait. So I'm getting to the point now where maybe some of my tofu is looking pretty good. I'll take that off. Move some of these other bits around. And then I'm just going to cut it up into little cubes. Okay, so my rice is cooked, um, the tofu is pretty much all done, I've got the egg ready, um, let's fry it up shall we? So I just, just recently got this big wok from the um, Asian shop in um, Newcastle and it's really really cool right, it's, um, it's huge. And I used to just use that smaller one and it's so hard to do a proper big dish. Yeah, it's like, get a big wok, that one was only about 30 bucks and it's really really cool. And what I like about it too is it's, it's, it's quite thin. Um, now I suppose normally with cookware you think that's the bad thing, but like when you're trying to cook Asian food, you want it really, really hot, right? So a good way to be able to get it really, really hot is to have thin uh, metal. Okay, so that's hot as already. So I go on garlic, ginger, a lot of ginger, that's definitely more than I wanted. So I'm going to just take some of that back here. So basically you want, um, you want your garlic to ginger about two to one. Two to one garlic to ginger. Um, ginger's very strong. Now, I've got my um, palm sugar here. Now what I've actually done, I've got in with a knife and sort of roughed it up. So I can just tip some out like that. salt because there's a lot of salt in the soy that I use so I don't really don't, don't add soy to my, uh, I don't add salt when I'm cooking Asian food because of the, the soy.
curry powder, not so much. That's got heaps. More of a stir. It's starting to smell pretty amazing, I gotta say. Nope, just lost a bit. for a minute or two. flavours in the cooking. You notice in Thai food you'll often have um, lemon juice or um, lemongrass or kaffir lime leaves or um, tamarinds, quite citrusy tasting. So yeah, they're, um, they're into that, so don't be afraid of it. It's good stuff. A bit of ketchup manis. Probably should have added that a little bit earlier, but that's all good. much done so I'm just going to add the Asian greens in a minute. You leave that till pretty much at the end because they cook a lot faster than the other veggies and you don't want them to wilt too much. Yeah? So I just give that another minute then I'm going to add my Asian greens and the last thing I add is the bean sprouts and I don't actually add the bean sprouts um, until I've taken it off the heat altogether because they don't even really need to be to be cooked. They're, they're amazing as they are. Um, so yeah, I mean same as these Asian greens. You, you're really just stirring them through. The heat of the dish will We'll basically cook them, yeah, they don't really need to be cooked. Pretty much done now. These are the last last touches. Right, 
Now the last, last, last step is I've got four amazing hot Thai bird's eye chilies here. They're small but they pack a punch. Uh, I'm going to chop these up to put on the end. These are fresh from my garden. You should really grow your own chilies, it's really easy and they're great. Okay, well, um, thanks once again for watching Byron's Veggie Cooking Show. Um, I've got a delicious lunch in front of me, so I'll, um, I'll let you go. And until um, next time, thanks again.